can say this is yeah. already started. I don't know. How yeah, you yeah, as you, as you wish, as you wish. So, I... okay, uh, well, I think, I mean, if, to be honest, you're, uh, I was thinking like to in introduce yourself, but I think probably the people know you more than know my my channel because you you, you are quite popular on, on especially on the blender community and on the i think your channel has way more subscribers than mine uh, <laughs> so it's a very yeah, small it, community it, but it's quite different your i mean your yeah life. but it's it's getting bigger and bigger and uh i must say it has blown like uh, since i've outputted the uh, i've released the um the reading course you know this one get pretty popular and since then also my twitter account has got a lot more attention because i i used to have like um, 10,000 subscribers on youtube on november mm -hmm. of uh, last year mm -hmm. and i'm nearly at 20,000 wow. and it took me about 6 years to to get those 10,000 and then you know yeah uh, there there was a lot of attention i i, I just think i i found the niche where I'm not good at, but you know what I mean, where, where people uh, trust I'm, I'm good at and, and where I, I, I'm enjoying and maybe where I'm the, uh, the, the best, uh, I guess, because I do a lot of stuff. I've been doing like uh, training courses since uh, maybe four or five years now. This was the, the fir very first one. Oh, yeah, that's and I, I've been active in the Blender community for uh, like uh, almost eight years now, seven years, I wow. guess. So that's a long time. So, yeah. uh, because eight years ago, Blender was, I mean, yeah, I think it, the community, I mean, I know Blender signs before was open source like when i think tom was working on not a number and it was already uh, like kind of freeware and i think the first time i ran it was on my o2 in a silicon graphics mm -hmm. and, and i i keep like following the blender i'm playing uh like i i I'll normally have it always installed and open and do some stuff i used to do uvs in some point with blender then i stop it and you know like puntual things but i think last yeah science i don't know what it was the when they changed the was 2011 when they changed the interface to the previous one it was a big like increment there and now with the 2.8 is when it really like exploded yeah I, yeah it has become like super trendy with the 2.8 and the, the heavy project yeah um the, the thing is I've been using it, I think it was version 261 or 262. Mm. Um, and it was not that it was getting more popular, but it was getting more serious, the thing that you could output with it, mm. with less difficulty. But uh, it was still um, more or less an hobbyist um, software. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was not taking like that much seriously, uh, I believe, from the whole uh, industry. Yeah. Uh, even if it was used professionally, you know what I mean? Like the, the big ones in the industry weren't yeah. looking at yeah. it. And yeah. it has changed a bit those last, I mean, three years, I think. Even before EV was uh, getting up there, yeah. EV uh, has made it popular among people. I mean, because you, you can output beautiful things like mm. super fast. Yeah. But the fact that it was open source free and pretty um, flexible, um, it was more and more used for prototyping in the video game industry. For example, at Ubisoft, mm -hmm. they use it a lot. Like they make maybe a game every three weeks, just a prototype and mm. they do it in Blender. And if oh. it's like uh, if they like it then they push it to a, a, a bigger team but there are few people working on blender just to make tons of prototypes like this that's cool and um but okay just okay let's just re rewind a little bit and okay, okay. because i think the um I mean, we was talking just before the start recording the, or before the, the cut, I'm going to start the, the podcast, but you started in another industry, like completely, and yeah. you you just decided to, you wanted to move to 3D or 
was more like you discover Blender or another 3D application and you like was yeah, more like a soft transition. How, how was that, the period? Yeah, it's, uh, I used to work in, so uh, I've made um, graphical design studies back in early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was uh, more this kind of thing where you design logos and, and things like this, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, at, at this day, like flash websites were pretty oh, yeah. uh, popular. So it was this era of, uh, of design. And um, uh, I've spent like almost two years working like in, in creative fields doing this kind of stuff. And then I, I got into this uh kind of industry, the um, uh, professional goodies industry, you know, when you go to any kind of uh, meeting and we give you a pencil or a mm. USB flash drive with a logo on top of this. So we were producing this kind of product with mm. the with the logo on top of it. You see, you know, those, those brands yeah. and stuff like that. And so I was like in a very technical pipeline because uh, my very first job there was to uh, make, to produce the, to print the, the flash drives and stuff. So there were like many different technologies like um, uh, plastic stickers like this, uh, thing, thing like that, laser engraving. So it was like a super technical pipeline. I was like using and abusing of Illustrator and Photoshop. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, my, my graphical abilities uh, were used to present the product, but also to sc- to make some script. And, and I was more involved into pipe production pipeline mm-hmm. between the commercial team and, uh, and my workshop. And through the years, uh, I settled um, a workshop in China, in Bulgaria, you know, uh, oh. to reduce the cost for sure. Wow. Uh, and ma- managed like teams online and, and, and some all help to write the production pipeline. So we have automated the, the creation of those visual, like the customer send the logo and in five minutes he has his visual like this. Mm-hmm. And um, at, at this time, at the, the glorious time before the, I, I think it was the, the first crisis, I don't remember uh, the year exactly. You meant the uh, the the the, uh, the dot com bubble thing, or like internet? The the, no. the, the financial crisis, like yeah, in like ten, 10 years ago, or something. In two thousand eight. Oh yeah. That yeah, two thousand eight. So we we were like uh, everybody were looking after us because we were the first in in. Europe and most in the world to work that fast and have this level of quality and uh, and we were a very small team in the production I was alone with two people and uh, and we had like two people at the um, logistic I don't know if we say in, like this in English okay yeah I'll, and there, yeah, there was so. like yeah there, there was like 40 people selling stuff and we were like four or five people handling all the others <laughs> <laughs> So, and at some point, uh, we were starting to, to make uh, this kind of product, but they were in uh, soft plastic and you could do whatever you want. Like the customer went with the ID, wanted a, a car shape for his USB flash drive and we make it. Mm-hmm. And so um, our, uh, the, the, the Chinese factories started to make 3D uh, uh, proof samples uh, to show us what it could look like. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the very first one, we are very rough and raw. But at some point, we work with a factory and they did like super realistic renders like this. Uh, and I was like, it was like in a few days, they output like super beautiful stuff. And I just wanted to know how they were <laughs> doing it. So That's interesting. I so- put my... So that was yeah. the your like spark your interest on 3D, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's really yeah. interesting. Because because I, I I used to to see a bit of 3D like in 1994 I think it was my brother which is three years older than me that was using 3ds Max 
or 3DS at, at this uh, time. And uh, I think it, it might not be even on Windows or maybe Windows 3.1 or something. Uh, and, no, uh, it was in DOS. In DOS, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so it I was crashing. It, I know. I know by yeah, <laughs> all, all the way around. And, 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 and you had to, to write everything he was modeling. Like, I want to put a point in uh, these coordinates and stuff like this. Yeah. So for me, 3D was really something for the clever people, for the elite. And I never left this idea until I, I got into uh, uh, it was uh, Rhinoceros. McNeil, McNeil. Oh, yeah. okay. I know that one, the, so, the NARPS modeler. Yeah, so they, they were doing the flash drive with this one. So I spent like uh, almost a year learning this software with the book. And I was, when I was working in this company, I was like, well, I've always been like obsessed with my job. But when when I had something to learn, you know, Mm -hmm. If I get bored, then I don't have any energy, but it mm -hmm. was like super exciting because we were the first to, to do this kind of thing and to break the records of the number of uh, orders and stuff like this. So that was super exciting. It was the, the beginning of the uh, digital printing on art surfaces like this. Mm -hmm. uh, it was new technology. So, so I was involved in, into this. So it was super interesting. And 3D came at the point where all of what we were doing was uh, half automated. Everything was script. So it was like super easy and, and I was starting to get bored. And so you give me like a new stuff to learn. So <laughs> I was like yeah. super excited. But yeah, but it's, and, a big, uh, it's a big change also. Like because you started in that, but you didn't stay on that. Say uh, like this like more like uh, industrial design kind of uh, area. So you move it from yeah. this to character animation in game. I mean, <laughs> it's a big arc there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, when I was like a kid, like at maybe five or six, I started drawing and I was drawing like every day. When I was 11 or 12, uh, I was reproducing uh, the artwork from the first Warcraft from Blizzard wow. on, you know, big, big canvas, you know, yeah. uh, just I, I, redrawing. The... I, I, so. I was a really hardcore uh, Warcraft and Warcraft 2 player. Yeah. And yeah. then when I did, <laughs> funny thing, when they did Warcraft 3 and it was, they wrote, it was in 3D and you can rotate the, the yeah. I was getting so much confused. I didn't know, and I stopped <laughs> playing because that... <laughs> that's funny. But that—that's yeah. I mean, I—I've always been like interested in drawing and and stuff like this. And before I I get into this industry, I was working with uh, some friends that has become the. Uh, I think it's like this. So yeah, they are they are doing like uh, urban. Um, uh, urban graphics and stuff like this, you know. So th those are oh, um, that sounds familiar. Sure, so they are pretty pretty well known uh, now. And at the beginning, we were free, so we we have made a little magazine. We were doing a lot of graphic design, you know. And they have slowly moved to uh, something a bit more unofficial at the beginning. But we had the opportunity to to make this officially. I mean, like asking the the town, if we can use this wall, etc. Uh, but I, I couldn't, um, how to say it? Uh, I couldn't afford continuing into this. I had to find a job, mm. um, and so I, I got into the industry. And also, we had like, we were uh, like waking up at uh, twelve or something and working until five a.m. You know, it was the student days, <laughs> like oh, waking yeah. a lot and all this kind of stuff. You know, yeah. and uh, so we were all super creative, etc. But I couldn't continue into this path, and also I, I always had more of a, uh, I was the technical guy in the team, you know, the, the guys that were organizing the 
the meetings with the official, the guys that was uh, digitalizing everything. And uh, so, so yeah. Uh, so I, I, what I wanted to say is that I've always been like sensitive to uh, character art and uh, watching animated movies, but I, I haven't been like practicing it for seven or eight years. I mean, drawing. I haven't been drawing anymore since I was into the, this company. Mm -hmm. And um, while I was there, uh, one of my, now he's a friend, one guy joined the team. He was helping me out producing those stuff. And just, just to make some money because he, he was a bit in, uh, in transition, let's say. And he had uh, a company that was producing mobile apps. Mm -hmm. And it was the time where there was a video game that has made, like, I think it was a Korean guy. He, he did make um, a video game where you, you have a bird and you have to go as far as possible. Flappy something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. He, yeah, but it was crazy that uh, I think... It's interesting that story in the game, but yeah, sorry, I was saying. Uh, no, no, no problem. And, and this guy got millionaire like in in a few days, and I, I think that he got crazy about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so he, he told me, "Yeah, we uh, we'd like you to make uh, you know some some video game with us because uh, I was uh, still drawing a bit and stuff like this." So. And uh, I was, yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, the, my usual job, I used to work like, honestly, maybe 70 hours a week. It was like super crazy. Like uh, also uh, I was, I had like four hours of uh, train to go to the work job. Uh, and I roughly, was like starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Like every day. So it was, yeah, pretty I was pretty committed to, to, to my career. Like... Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and so uh, when all when everything slowed down, you know, I was like, okay, so I have free time and uh, I was bored. Uh, I think I've always been a bit like workaholic. Uh, work I don't know how we say it. You know? So I, do, I don't like this this expression that much because I, I'm just doing something I like. So. They asked me if uh, I wanted to do it, and we were like, "Yes." And and we've started doing something. I I don't know if I have a few pics here, yeah. And so it was this guy, <laughs> and it was in in two D, and we were using some. So it was made in uh, Illustrator mm -hmm. because I was using Illustrator every day, so I was pretty, yeah, used to it. And we've started with some proof of concept on or some stuff like this and we thought that it would be easier to make it in 3d mm -hmm. it will be more flexible you know using unity than making everything uh in 2d in vector style so uh this is where i had to choose whether i used a crack copy of maya or mm -hmm. anything else so this is this was the move that introduced me to blender it's uh you can't do this in nubs for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't, I, I was, you know, getting professional. So the time where you are student and where you are cracking softwares, I mean, this is not something to say, but everybody does this. But once you get uh, like professional, you're slowly yeah. understanding that this is not something really serious. Yeah, And I didn't want it to, mm -hmm. to, to crack software where I had uh, a free solution that looked pretty convincing so yeah I, I think that back in the days and um, when i mean back in the days it's pre-internet yeah it was i mean but nowadays uh, all the companies i mean you you can have like a blender of course for free but all the other software you have like students edition or personal learning editions yeah. or you have the indie edition that it's almost free like it just yeah, yeah, be yeah. that i mean if you're a student probably you pay in 10 100 times more for your school than what the cost of software and yeah but the um, but yeah you have a lot of access nowadays to legally use any software if you're a student you know? yeah I, I believe yeah like those last 10 years it has 
changed in a way yeah. but the, the 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 good old time of the cd of the cds and stuff like this like we were like cracking every 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 yeah. software because i think at this time uh, photoshop was like three thousand uh, euros or maybe five thousand euros i don't know and um, uh, it was quite expensive and uh and so you you couldn't when you were a student you you couldn't pay for it but what i've learned later on is that they were absolutely aware that a lot of people were uh, tracking their softwares uh, and they were okay with it uh, un unless you make money because they knew that if you crack it you will learn the software and you will use it yeah, professionally it's, then so it's, like, it's yeah. the same now they so just make it official so uh, you are a student you can use our software for free because we know that then you yeah. will if you've spent like two years be, uh, learning yeah. like Maya in depth yeah. You won't be willing to 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 switch when you enter your first yeah. job. So yeah, that's absolutely uh, that's... true. But yeah, I'm dating myself, but my experience was with uh, three point five discs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Floppy and disc, I remember, yeah. I, you want this like, and it's it's like ten discs. You're like what ten disc? This cost me like <laughs> two months of my savings to get the, the yeah. ten disc. Yeah, 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 I remember. Oh, it is like, and then, I used to have like floppy disk, you know, the, the five inch. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, oh, the five floppy, inch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was the same time, yeah. In the 90, I think in the 90s, um, yeah, 90s 92 yeah. or three, the first CD ROMs were coming along, and it was like uh, yeah. 200 disk in one disk, yeah, you know, 3.5, but it was like. 20, 20 euros one CD-ROM and uh, the engraving was like, it cost a bunch like the, the laser engraving uh, uh, hardware. It was maybe like, I don't know, three or four thousand uh, hundred yeah. uh, euros to, yeah. to have one. It, it was super expensive. Yeah, I remember so, the yeah, first time I, I see one, my friend get a new, I don't know, he, he get a super nice computer. And the CD-ROM didn't have the the little thing that opens. It was yeah. like a diskette that you yeah, open, you put the, the CD-ROM close, yeah. and then put the oh, disc. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking like, that's the ultimate thing, wow. And then, of course, if you think like, oh my god, you, you have to put like the CD-ROM in said case that represents kind of a disk, and then you put it inside the the reader uh, and it could it could break like super easily so it was like uh, and it was super expensive yeah, yeah. and it was engraving at one or, or two times the speed it was like super long now yeah, now you, you we really don't really. even use it anymore yeah. but it can uh, explode yeah. also <clears throat> I, I had a couple of times that yeah. explode <laughs> now i think yeah, you explode yeah. what <laughs> This is why the, you, you remember at, at some point they were like increasing the speed and the speed and the speed. Oh, yeah. And they've stopped to 32x, I think, because the speed of the rotation <laughs> made uh, the, the disk blow. So it wasn't a problem with the hardware, it was a problem with the, the medium, the, the, yeah. the support, the CD ROM. So that's why they have <laughs> stopped there and you can't go I faster didn't know that. than this. No, but uh, I remember it was like grabbing something and, and you hear like a crack, like yeah, a plastic, tech, 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 tech. <laughs> super strong, what the hell? And you cannot uh, open, and then with the little clip you open it to a pool, of course you clean everything, you dust with the duster, and keep... <laughs> okay. uh, uh, yeah. So yeah, so then the, this conversation reminds us that we are getting whole, I think. Oh uh, no, that's so great. <laughs> I, I found uh, really enjoyable that 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 day. So it was cool. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I uh, that, that's something good about this. I think uh, about being a bit old in a way is that you, we've learned some of the 3D stuff the hard way. I believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And the core thing about it, <laughs> and this is something that um, I I felt this in whatever I, I've been doing when I was doing those um, USB flash drive stuff mm -hmm. here. Um, before I used to work in the in in a traditional printing workshop. Mm. So the um, the needs to print 
a simple uh, piece of paper was uh, very uh, the, the process wa was very demanding and you may not make any mistakes mm -hmm. and the thing is that when we uh, switch to dig uh, everything digital with the di digital printers and stuff like this there were some application or some i don't know how to say it but some difficulties you will meet that were the same as in traditional printing mm -hmm. but the newcomers they didn't know about it and they didn't know even how to repair a digital printer but in the end it's mm. not that complicated you know so and i think for 3d uh when you've learned 3d like 10 years ago you you might be I won't say better, but you, you, you may understand some core principles a little better than people that are jumping in 3D now and they don't really care about normals, about the number oh, yeah. of vertices they are using. They can sculpt and dynamic everything and yeah. they don't care about topology. Yeah, and, yeah probably. You know, but, uh, yeah. And so you, you, you started so moving in 3D because these games that you wanted to use uh, yeah. 3D to, to create like the art so even the game yeah. probably is not 3d it was more like flash or 2d but the art was done in 3d you know that's what i yeah yeah and, so and you kept the... going from there in games more deep and deep oh no, not not really so we, we had this first project and then uh this second one i think it was the, the the second project this one i don't remember exactly the you know the timeline and for this one we make it like the wrong way it was like a space shooter you know mm -hmm. and uh, we say okay let's make um, a kickstarter campaign make a tons of money <laughs> and then make a game so oh, wow. it's not the way okay but we were young and we didn't know about this so uh we worked on the trailer first so when i started learning blender i think this was after like four months learning blender starting this project and it was rigged it was animated and i would that, just that's, after four months that's great yeah, yeah, I was pretty pretty happy about this because it, it was all, also rigged and uh, so yeah, whatever. The, the thing is that I had like uh, I was like learning new stuff and uh, there was a goal, you know, behind. So it, it really pushed me. When and the was, thing was that which, which year? Oh, Do you remember? I think it was ninety. Uh, no, sorry, 20, 2013, maybe, early mm -hmm. 2013, or because I started learning Blender in um, 2012, August, I remember, during oh, wow. the, the holidays, <laughs> I, I received the, the first book and, and started it, so... Uh. Uh, I was learning a lot from CG Cookie, uh, those are... Uh, mm, that's um, a classic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I got into 3D to make this kind of stuff for the. So so I was sculpting a bit, modeling. It was a lot of uh, poly modeling to to output this. So, mm -hmm. but That's yeah, great. you know, really for, yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was decent. Uh, and the thing is that I was still working in the company, and we switched from uh, taking um, uh, real photo shoot of the product to make them in 3D, you mm. know, to uh, yeah. prepare the, the rendering. And uh, the, the, my, my boss was not super convinced at first, but then he saw that it was very flexible and he could produce a lot of artwork and uh, have one of, uh, we were only two graphical designers. One was only uh, mean to make this kind of thing. And uh, I was the guy in production, etc. and uh, so I started to make the, the graphic design stuff to promote our products in 3D. And they see that it was like super flexible. And even if there was a bit of time to prepare uh, the products, mm -hmm. then you could you, you didn't have to have the, the great light to spend hours on Photoshop. Once you have the product, you can change the color and make, and, and make thousands of uh, renders like super fast. So... Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I've been like into hard surface modeling during two years before I left the company, like almost every day. So that's the cool thing is that I was able to bring uh, 3D into my uh, my daily work. Okay, mm-hmm. and I think that that was a great opportunity to, to learn faster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and and then and, you you move it. I mean, because uh, if I understand correctly, you 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 are like independent. You have your own company, or or you nowadays you... yes. But at this time, I was uh, employed. Yeah. But what I mean yeah, is, I... like you move it. I mean, you you finish on or you end up in this company, and you decided to to start yeah. your own. Like yeah. I'm gonna be freelance, or I'm gonna be my own boss, and yeah. do. Yeah. That was like, like six, seven years ago. Yeah, something like this. Yeah, um, I, yes, five or six years. Yeah, six years ago. So the the thing is that um, the, there was the the three D part. The, um, the after the crisis, the the team was reduced a lot. Mm. Everything was almost uh, automated, or we know all the pipeline. We were like uh, outsourcing uh, the production more and more because we have the expertise. So wh- when you, let's say, okay, master something, you mm-hmm. don't need to do it yourself anymore. You can ask someone else to do it and just uh, do the s- supervision uh, also. So it was mostly produced in China or in Bulgaria where the, the cost was reduced. And also uh, the delivery, uh, we were able to deliver uh, by airplanes. Mm -hmm. So the the market has really uh, changed. Nowadays, uh, ordering something in China and being delivered like one week later seems to be something very common for people. But at this time, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. When you were ordering something in China, it was at least two months because it was uh, delivered by boat and it was very big quantities. Okay. And so the, the, the job, I was getting bored even if I was doing 3D every day. The, the thing is that when you are doing 3D every day and you're enjoying it and you are working on this kind of products and you have also this kind of projects on the side part, mm-hmm. it's hard to stay focused in, and interested <laughs> in what you are doing. And... Uh, and when you get bored in your work, this is the time where you are starting to look around and, you know, like when you have problem or when there are human problems in a company where you don't have the time to raise your head and look around, you, mm. you don't care about it. Mm. But when you're bored, then every little problems become bigger because you are bored and I don't like this guy. You don't. I don't like the way you're speaking to me, etc. Uh, but when you are crunching, you, you don't care about this. <laughs> and so, so I I did save enough money. And um, at this time, in, in, uh, in so in France, where you lose your job, uh, you receive money from the state for two years. So it's uh, a part of what you were earning before. Okay, mm-hmm. but there are. Sp- specific condition for you to get uh, this uh, this money so i've negotiated with my boss we were like very friendly because you know i've been a part of the co- of the company at the very beginning and everything was okay uh and he accepted that we we break in a way that i could have uh, those this money okay mm-hmm. so i knew that i i had like one year in front of me to achieve something and to to work on my own. And if I wasn't able to make uh, at least a month of income in one year, I will uh, find another job. You know? And so uh, I think it was in uh, 2014, in March, I've left the company and I've started as a freelancer. And I found... Uh, I. I the, the day I, I've left, I've already had a little job. It was for one of the company's customer mm-hmm. doing a bit of, you know, um, uh, uh, digital, um, uh, how to say this, uh, 
graphic design and stuff like this, but it was like maybe a free, 300 euros contract. It was like, you, you can't, but you know, you, you start as a freelancer and you already have a job. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I have a lot of free time, I was doing a lot of um, personal artwork like uh, this one. Mm -hmm. So this uh, creature here, I don't know if we, I mean, we can't see it like super well, but you have the idea. It was a retake of this one. Oh, it was the same mechanical spider, but with a little more 3D experience, let's say. <laughs> so uh, I made it like... Uh, Looks... Yeah, really improve it. Yeah, I, I, will, I, I, I have to say. I will. I will get it in Blender. I, I found found it like. Oh, quite you have the, Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Like deep, deep into my hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> so I did this one, and uh, it was like picked on the CG Society. I don't know if you know this. Yeah, uh, of course. Okay, so like for me, it was like the the, the grail to to get. <laughs> Yeah, a notification from the Before CG was Society. Really, really like popular CG Society. I don't know what happened, yeah. but it's, it's faded away very slowly. I, I don't know if they are still still super yeah. active, but I, I believe I don't know why. Maybe the ease of use uh, of ArtStation made it more popular. Yeah, I, I think that I believe I times know. changed. Before it was more like forum the people went there to talk now the yeah. ways that the people talk normally it's still the forums i still like a lot of forums but uh maybe because i'm all minded i don't know but the people <laughs> move a lot to discords and things like that and yeah. art station even you have this community sense that you can comment on on other peers and other artists and make friends and followers and this thing. I mean, the goal is more art centric, where it's like you your portfolio and you you can see other people work and you know. So I think it's different the way that now it's more like a social. Well, it's not like it's a social network like Instagram or other. Like. Yeah, that that's that that's weird. I must say that. While you were seeing this, uh, when I started 3D, I was like super active on Blender Artist and on CG Cookie. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, I almost never go there unless I have something to post or to mm. promote or, or, you know, but um, I, I'm, I'm mo most of the time on Twitter. I think this is, this is where I get... Yeah, yeah I the, think the, the... It, it has his space, like... Uh, on my case, uh, I uh, well, and and the M gear. Uh, I don't know if you you know the 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 rigging system. Yeah, yeah. We... I mean, yeah, I've been watching a bit of it. Yeah. So so we have a, a forum for the community, but it's focused on this tool. It's for M gear. So and the, and uh. you can post like if you have questions or like you need support or anything. But it's very niche related. Only it's not like a general purpose forum to talk of everything it's and the advantage of having this is that because you have the topics and you have the threads and when you start you i don't know like for instance i have problems installing in mac there is a few so and you one comes and have this issue and the next one that comes and have this issue can make a search and find like replies from maybe a year ago yeah. how to solve his problem and that's great the forum is great for that because it's it's kind of an archive for knowledge and it's but built he, by the, he, the isn't it the, the isn't it the the point about all of this is that i used to go on forum just to to chill and see if i i find something new interesting mm. like i i would do on art station now but i mostly do it on on the iPad or on mo mm. mobile stuff, you know, just to check the new artworks. But then when you are looking to solve a problem, maybe you, you prefer to find uh, something very specific where you know you won't have like a thousand of answers from a thousand of different no. forum members and maybe yeah. one person of them really yeah. know the answer. So yeah. uh, I feel like, yeah, may maybe it has moved a, a bit like this. What I like about the CG Society still when I, I go there is that they are very 
good articles and mm -hmm. um, stuff like this, but I, I never check artworks there anymore. I just go on ArtStation and just browse and, uh, and see. Yeah, me too. So. I, I think, yeah, if I want to, to see art and things like that, I, I go to ArtStation. If you want to check news, probably I go to my Twitter feed. You know, yeah. if I want to do inspiration, like random, uh, probably Instagram. I, I have a, I follow a lot of people and always have some kind of like nice art that I like to see. But like, uh, I, I follow mainly photography and, and Instagram, for instance. I, don't, okay, I okay. try to to have more variety on the menu of visuals. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm on Instagram too, but I, I, I never use it. Like so, someone told me, yeah, you should go on Instagram. So I created an account like a year ago, but I maybe have like 10 posts and, <laughs> you know. More than me. <laughs> so I mean, you have 10. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, so, so yeah, the, when I started as an independent, I, I had a lot of free time. So I was still creating stuff for myself. So we weren't into the project anymore. I just wanted to make a, a new version of the, yeah, of that's... this thing. So. Yeah, it should, really nice. should render like fast. That's the new yeah. one, the 2. Point just released yesterday. And this is this is cycles now, no? When it does this yeah. uh, refinement. Yeah. yeah, it's cycles. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was very Ooh. happy. I, 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 think, uh, I think your your sound is getting chopped with the uh, maybe because the rendering. Can, can oh, you okay. Yeah. No, no, it sounds much better. Yeah, I think. Ah, okay, because <laughs> yeah. it's using the, the, the it's the, sucking the, all your the... power and. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. It's using the, the 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 graphic card. So. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, like yeah. a little, like <laughs> like that. It's okay, but when okay. when you start the rendering, I'm it's dying. Like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> It's so, this, yeah. this filter you told me the 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 noise filter the the, the so, sound. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's using the card. So so uh, at some point, one of the the customers I had was uh, doing miniatures like this. Mm -hmm. It was for a board game, you know, and they were three D printing their miniatures, and uh, they you know that they, they were looking for someone to do, do them. So it was like super fast box modeling you know it was like super uh, easy so it wasn't paying that well but the project was super interesting and uh, i've nice. asked them if i could make some uh, artworks like this just for fun and for free so they told me yes and i i don't remember where i've posted it but this has become the i received an email from the blender foundation and uh uh, asking me if they could use it to make the the splash screen. Oh wow, the, that's a big achievement yeah. on the on the community. Yeah, I, I was like crazy. Like it was like one of the best day of my yeah. life. I believe I I couldn't believe it, and I was like three or four months uh, being uh, on my own and working for myself. And you receive an email from the mm. the foundation, and at this time for me it was like super. Uh, inaccessible let's say mm -hmm. while nowadays i feel like if you want to talk to uh, tom rosendal mm -hmm. just send, send him a message on, on twitter or whatever and mm -hmm. and there are big changes that he, he will just answer you know it's mm -hmm. the, the community thing is uh, has become like super uh, super accessible but uh, at this time i felt like it was like yeah. the you know the blender castle on the mountain and you were just in the valley or something uh, I see. so yeah this this uh helped me a lot and from there i had a few uh more uh corporate customers like this one building um an open gl website where you build the bike so it was like a, a proof of concept mm -hmm. for an open gl uh shop online where you can customize stuff and, and they were like they were aiming at creating it for um like something like Harley Davidson, you know. So uh -huh. you could uh, build your custom 
uh, motorcycles on the website and order it. And uh, I don't know where the project goes, but um, but it was, I think it was my very first project management, you know, because in the end they, they've they given me the baby and I was working with uh, one dev and mm -hmm. we did more or less everything on our own. So it was uh, kind of su super cool. interesting. But yeah, it, yeah I, I know the, the bicycle, the, the I mean, the business, it's, it's really, really difficult. I have a family that works as a, uh, how you say like like uh, sales salesperson for uh, cycling material like bicycles yeah. Yeah. and yeah. cloth and it's a difficult it's a market really really difficult the bicycles <laughs> there's yeah, a lot yeah. of brands yeah. and it's super expensive and you don't sell that that much it's a uh, yeah and, and that's really your cool idea. idea. Yeah. yeah, 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 and the fact they were using bikes because it does make sense, but they were more showcasing oh, the tool of a custom shop I see. Uh, than you know the those cycles. They were like reference we've made. Like, oh, uh, okay, sorry, I, I misunderstood. And, and, I was thinking it's no, no, it, it was not for a specific uh -huh. customers. It was a, a proof of concept, and I then uh, they they show it to other companies and and see what we can do with, with your product uh -huh. uh, and the thing that was fun about this is that the bikes were modeled in zbrush so they were yeah i know they were like super mm -hmm. high poly and they delivered it to me telling me that yeah we have a 3d artist he has made the bikes uh, now we want them to run uh, like real time on a web browser and i was uh -huh. like i the poly count is a bit high. <laughs> Retopo. Yeah, <laughs> Retopo so, death. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been re uh, making retopology for those for uh, a little while. But yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Well, and, you have, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's interesting because you, you, you alternate like creators and uh, what I consider more like industrial design kind of uh, side of the... 3d world yeah yeah <clears throat> I, I i'm not super creative to be honest if you give I, me a I good don't believe you. I, I saw you no 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 really, really. Yeah, yeah but uh, i mean i had the concept art for almost everything you know uh not, not those but I didn't have the ID. This one was for a friend of mine for her son. And she told me he loves pirate pigs. And I said, okay, I will do a pirate pigs, you know. Pirate pig. Pirate pig. <laughs> and it's this a, one, this, I think this is my name. has a pirate pig in the animation. In yeah, the yeah, I think it was a, an, an, a cartoon or something like this, you yeah. know. And she, I, I didn't know about it. And she oh. told me that I was like, "Yeah, it yeah, sounds great." Right. This one, <laughs> this was, this was was for my my niece. Uh -huh. She loved caracol because she was raised in Madrid, so she she ah, didn't say yeah, snail in Spanish. In, yeah, in French she was uh, saying it in Spanish. So I. I Try to make a portrait of her at this time, but it was not super like super convincing. But the the scene was was okay, I, I guess. That's and great this, showing yeah. all this back thing, and um, yeah, it's. But if you see, I mean, you have here the new stuff. I mean, also like your latest like work on on this uh, Behance, or it's on on the other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, I have. Because the people, I think that. it's great that the people can visit your Behance and see your. I mean, because the many progress, people who right. start, they, they because not too many people keep this on his portfolio, and yeah. I'm not gonna show you ever what I did like ten years ago, <laughs> and not even like like twenty years ago. I probably I don't even have it. I, I <laughs> but <laughs> like this is great for people who is starting. I mean that. Uh, they can see someone like you coming from one different industry, moving slowly in 3D, and I mean, it's great, I mean first month was great, but the evolution that you can see on just with one scroll on your mouse it's, it's amazing yeah, yeah, it's uh, the, the thing is that 
So I, I haven't kept, and, and that's very sad because like a couple of, uh, or maybe a month ago, I've made a YouTube video mm -hmm. where I showed those progress. Uh, because one, one thing that, uh, so I, I, I make online training, but I also make one-on-one uh, -on -one in class training, you know, oh. sometimes in companies or stuff like this, okay? And um, a lot of people are um, just afraid to start because yeah. they don't, they, they are not able to output something like this, like in two days. Like they, they just started to learn 3D and, and if like in one week they are not able to make a nice sculpt or something, they feel like 3D is not for them. But my very first 3D model was like pure garbage. It was horrible. It was... Yeah, and I think I erased it from my computer like a few months ago. And when I started making this video, I was like, "Wow, why I have I haven't uh, kept this one?" Because it will be such, I think, a relief for a lot of people yeah, to I see wish, that yeah, I when, when I started, I, I was not good at 3D at all. You yeah. know, so. But I don't know. I I, I never been very. Uh... No, am I? Am I? But like before like on these kids i <laughs> was a big mess on my my dad's yeah. home i you know you left home you leave all this garbage behind you don't know what's there you don't have even a drive a this drive to to, to check what <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i i've always kept my old work on uh you know i have like an hard drive that i, I save every now and then and whenever i, I mm. change uh uh workstation i just copy everything on the new hard drive because at this time having uh 200 megabytes files was a huge project you know now yeah. we can store like gigabits of files without a problem so yeah, yeah so uh, and the thing so what I just wanted to say about all of this, so I was making a bit of money and it was paying pretty well. I think like the third month I was working, I was able to pay myself almost as well as when I've left the company I was working for. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have, honestly, in my I had some issues uh, in my, uh, how to say, in my freelance career, but uh, mm -hmm. it was uh, mostly due to overload of work than lacking of, of work. Oh, okay. uh, you, you know, I, I had like, uh, no, not, not that I burnt out, but I had some, you know, uh, I, wa I was working too much and I collapsed a couple of times at some point. The and uh, like... like Collapse, yeah, collapsing. Yeah, collapsing. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It was pretty <laughs> pathetical. Like uh, uh, I no collapsed way. into my water closet, and my girlfriend just uh, just heard like a big boom, and oh. like uh, she found me like on the ground in the toilet. Like I was uh, <laughs> just no. because I was tired, you know. And yeah, it like happened. The, the like, blood pressure goes down, you know. Yeah, you, yeah. You I know, get... no. Yeah, yeah. I, I I never had that. Because working, uh, but doing sports, oh, oh, my sugar. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that 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 was like super surprising. But it it was a time. It was like four years ago, five years ago, mm. where I was like working. I don't know, maybe fourteen hours a day, and and still learning. You know, I was like. 100 uh, percent committed to uh, mm. and and in in a way that you are at uh, a point where you never have this kind of problem you know mm -hmm. so you you become reasonable when you have problem you mm -hmm. know especially when you are passionate in what you are doing it's like people that doing sports mm -hmm. the hardcore way if they don't get an injury they will continue on and train and train. And generally, every all those people that do sport like at the high level, they stop yeah. because of injuries, you know, yeah. not because it's reasonable to stop now. <laughs> yeah. It's because I can't do it anymore. So it was kind of the, the same thing. Um, but the, yeah, what, what, uh, the thing is that the learning curve during my, 
I believe the two or three first years was like amazing. Like I, I could see uh, technically and, uh, and and visually progresses like every month. It was mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, and, and that was super motivated. So I, I was super obsessed and, uh, and I was slowly understanding everything about normal maps, uh, dynamic muscle stuff. So it wasn't like what we see in the, in the movies, but just the fact that I understand how it works and uh, I did uh, this little demo at some point, J just those, it was uh, a driven displacement map. Mm -hmm. So nowadays it's like super like normal, but uh, at this time for me, it was like, uh, I don't know, something new and, and it was pretty popular, you know? A new land, so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 was amazing to to do the, this kind of nice. thing. So uh, that uh, that's really great. And you keep doing because normally, um, I mean, in my, for instance, my my case, uh, my career, I like almost nowadays the people specialize straight out. Many many, for instance, animators. Yeah. Many animators go. I want to be animator and boom. yeah, yeah. Uh, back in the day, <laughs> it sounds terrible, but it was more like if you start 3D, you generalist, you do 3D, yeah. you don't do one thing, and then little by little you get specialized in in one thing. And I, for instance, I my first jobs in 3D was male animator. Even I yeah. kind of was all like generalist, but was animator, and then I was. A terrible animator. I uh, and now I'm even worse. I don't animate anymore. And but I was very technical, so I little by little start doing rigging, and I kind of like it, the technical side and so on. So I become better there, better, and I focus on that. And this has been almost. I I did different things on my career, but kind of like almost went back to rigging over and over. No. Yeah. And but in your case, you you keep doing everything keep modeling you keep doing the, the art yeah, texturing yeah. rigging and animation and I, I saw your latest like you the the warrior you're doing on the um nora it's a game i'm currently yeah, yeah. the, the yeah. that i would like to also jump on that and talk a little bit on on the project yeah sure 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 we, we but get it's there, it's yeah. and it's super cool i was watching your videos i'm following by the way your your youtube channel i <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I, i've seen i've seen you popping here and there <laughs> oh, really uh, just, yeah on twitter i was like yeah, i know this guy <laughs> <laughs> no but it's cool i mean and i really like the the way that you do the the videos and it's uh i don't use blender on my daily basis but I, I i found value on on what you 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 show and uh, a lot of your your like videos i i watched the other day you did this uh this video that was like for people who starts also like you recommend all this training like oh yeah yeah that yeah. was great i was checking i like oh that. <laughs> yeah but the, the, the this one so uh, uh so uh, uh, maybe maybe we, we can jump on this yeah, right oh, away. Yeah, maybe, sorry. <laughs> it, just, just, just no 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 uh, problem. Tangent. So uh, okay. since since the, the the thing is that so I've been working on on, on Noara for three years now. So I'm like ninety five percent dedicated to the game. Okay, when I started it was like fifty percent, and I was still doing other financing jobs. So I, I'll talk about this rapidly just after. But um, uh, I've been doing uh, educational content for five years. Mm -hmm. And the first one, I didn't make that much of money, but the time I invested in, like in five or six months, it paid out, you know? It mm -hmm. was, uh, I'd been working for a month and I got paid like for a month and a half with the mm -hmm. soul. So I was like, okay, I'm, I enjoy yeah, doing this. Because I, I've always wanted, when, uh, ev um, even when I was in, in college, I wanted to be a teacher at mm -hmm. some point. This is something I always wanted to be. And when I did this one, this one uh, was uh, pretty successful. So it wasn't like the, a big success, but, you know, it brings uh, a bit of money so you can go on holiday or you, you can save a bit. And, and that mm -hmm. was cool. 
but since um, I've released uh, this one, not that much, but this one and this one, it, it has become a, a big success and a, a big part of my income, you know. Mm. So uh, now um, I dedicate one day uh, per week uh, to make YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. While before it was uh, at this period of my time uh, of my life, it was more like, oh, we, we can do this this way. I need to make a YouTube video to share it with the people. Now it has really become part of my job. Yeah. So yeah, I, I see. Yeah, and you can see that the production of my videos has quite evolved uh, this year. Uh, if you compare the, the video quality of this one and this one. Uh, whether it's the editing, the sound, the, the, so so I've put energy into it. I, and I for saw, the... Yeah, I saw the presentation that you did for both the red. Um, I don't remember how is your the red, yeah, the yeah, old, the, the some red. Running, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the 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 also the rigging. Uh, I watched yeah. it a couple of times, and it's really well done. You did animation. You did a presentation that it's it's yeah, uh, yeah. it's. I mean, it's you. You can feel that you invested time to, to, to prepare something that... Yeah, yeah, that's... I, I think and... it's... Uh, because I, I see... So so I, I won't be talking about the quality of my uh, educational content because that would be biased. But no, regarding the marketing, I see I see people that they, they are doing like amazing add-ons or amazing, you know... Tools I would buy, I will maybe put 30, 40, 50 uh, dollars into it uh, w without any problem. And they don't market at, at all. They, yeah. they don't. So I, you don't need to go like uh, this far to present your product. But I, maybe I spent like two weeks working on, on the marketing side of things mm -hmm. while I spent... Uh, depending on the course, but it's one to two months of full time work to to create a course like this. Okay, yeah. so spending like one or two weeks uh, building visuals to, I mean, when you put this on Twitter, it does work. Yeah. Uh, okay. If I you put learn. just, a, yeah, that that's. I mean, th this is why whenever uh, I post something on Twitter, I, I understand you. Uh, if it's a picture, you get like 10 times more views. And mm. if it moves, it's like 30 or 40 more times. Mm. So if it moves well, it's like yeah. you multiply it like two or, or 200. Yeah, or so. it's like human eye. It, it, it gets a track. It's like the yeah, T-Rex yeah. in Jurassic uh, Park. The move, no. <laughs> If you move, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, we are all reptilians, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but yeah so. you, you, I, I do have a couple of. I mean, I do almost all because the training I do it's it's for M gear mainly, so I don't go yeah. any general like anything else. And I I did a lot of training for free because my goal was. I mean, M gear is not like something I. It's a, like, like a non-profit project let's say yeah 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 I so you. but i did i did these workshops and everything in youtube but the, the things i do in youtube it's kind of like i prepare but i record it in one take with errors with everything like mm -hmm. if it's one hour or 20 minutes is 20 minutes is the time i invest in the video and i did a couple of videos that i want to make it like better like shorter videos very specific, concise, yeah. with all the material and everything. And it takes so much time to do like that. Like when you do something like that, you try. To, I don't know how to explain that, but yeah, yeah. But instead I, of so, so ju ju just uh, yeah, yeah. The, the the people who buy or watch the video, the the students, don't need to invest too much time to collect the information. Let's yeah. say. Because you invest the, 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 to... the, the average is like you, you spend, uh, I do spend like one hour of work to record, to make a two minute videos. So one, one minute took like, yeah, one hour the least. Yeah. So whenever you make a, a 10 minute video, it, it took me a whole day the least. Yeah. And, and uh, I think the, the point, the thing you wanted to point in out, it's sometimes the time you spend pen in production you you might not get that much of a reward afterwards yeah. 
that's what yeah. you wanted to say. Yeah, no, what I want to point at here is two things. First one, it's uh, I did a couple of video intros like you did, but <laughs> scrap. <laughs> I should learn from you, make a better intro <laughs> next time. But the second, it's like the the people ask me sometimes, but what's in the video? I mean, what's in in these tutorials that you sell that is not in the on YouTube? <laughs> and say, probably you can find all the same information in my YouTube channel than in my in my videos. But it's how much time do you want to to spend? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> you know. So I I spend it all this time for you, so you don't need to to take this elongated uh, class. But probably in YouTube for free, there is m even more information than the ones that that I did pay but the pay once is like two hours or one hour and something and it's very I don't know yeah to, to the point and but yeah. you, you you i i think it's like it's it's normal um i mean uh when i do so when i do videos now on youtube and when i first started doing videos and tutorials on youtube the, the goal wasn't to make money about it mm -hmm. you know and i'm not into uh, like um uh something like the, the community is marvelous and i want to share with the community I, it's just like i, I like to to share what i'm doing and mm. if it helps people that that's cool i'm just you know like this and and the fact is that doing this will bring attention and then you may do a bit of money from this so it's uh um well, what I mean here is that the the thing about ma making YouTube videos, the, the the first intention is not necessarily to make money, but you want to 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 share your skills and and I feel like whenever I'm doing a YouTube video, it pushes you to some hole. It's a bit, uh, but to master what you are doing, you know. Yeah. to 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 test it to verify because I, I did this in the past so you make a tutorial and like 10 minutes after it's on youtube you get uh you know a comment saying oh you could have done this this way it would be like faster and more uh, reliable and you feel like shit you know? <laughs> uh, this, so, yeah in my case it doesn't happen because it's very niche what i do i think it's super niche but the um, yeah for me yeah it's like i i don't for me i mean it's in my I, because i think it's very strange in my situation because i i feel like we we share a lot of common on this area mm -hmm. like having a youtube channel doing training and sharing a lot with the community but at the same time uh for instance for me M gear is a tool i use on my on my on my work job, on my yeah. studio yeah. and we do uh, the vast majority of the development that we do for for M Gear is to cover our needs on the studio, and we share yeah. it for free. We share it with the rest of the community studios and everybody who wants to use it. It's there for there. So it's not like some people ask, "Can you do this or can you add that or things like that?" And I say, "Yes, it's a good idea, but I don't need it. It's an open source project. You can like no kidding, like Blender. No. You can." make a pull request do the changes and every the community get benefit from that but the first goal is not to serve you <laughs> it's strange yeah, yeah. it's yeah. to serve me or the other developers that add functionality for what we need and we share this tool for the who wants to use it so and now little by little we, we still have more help and we try to cover some needs from people that have different needs than us and um how you say like yeah but the question is why are you doing this yeah because it's for me what i say it's it's yeah. the tool i use uh, it's the tool i need and then I yeah share. and i i think i have exactly the same thing when i get you know uh video requests could you do a video on this on this on this topic or this topic you know Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. And then someone asks for something you will be using or you would like to know how to do. And and this pushed me, you know, to study the, the stuff. So you, you don't necessarily do it for the, the people, you know. They, yeah, they just yeah. bring 
hey, well, is your tool able to do this? And you're like, oh, that's a good yeah. question. And, and that's yeah. something I would like it to, to yeah. be able to. And, and I think it's the, the power of open source and of Blender yes. because a lot of like EV, uh, it wasn't like we need to make a real time render. It was a, a private project from a one man army and it got super popular and uh, and the foundation say okay man you you need to work yeah. for us and and put yeah. it into blender yeah. and you know it's uh, yeah. i think the the open source philosophy brings so much opportunities mm -hmm. and yeah. uh and, and and this is what i i really like about mm -hmm. sharing my work because yeah. at some point um people around me were telling me that but if you share what you are doing people will learn from you and they will take your job okay yeah. but this is not the case no, you know no. absolutely because not because uh... the more you produce the more you learn so you you're uh, always like no but um, it's, yeah that's uh, yeah it's, I, I totally it's, agree with that yeah mm, but one of the things for instance for 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 the mgear project that it's um what is great to sharing like let's say I don't get money for, straight from from Engear. Indeed, I I, I have expenses <laughs> like <laughs> for yeah, the servers yeah, yeah. and some yeah. some little things. Not too much, but there, there is some some expenses there. But the thing is, to having th this community of people using it, even if I develop mainly for the needs that uh, the studio needs, or but because we share, there is a lot of contributors that have the same needs for his studio the like for instance we have a pull request uh, um from rudolf like it's one of the the um contributors he working yeah. in a game company and um uh i like a lot this company that what they do and i forgot the name now it's in sweden uh uh oh uh, in fact sorry uh, is the one uh, they did the control game uh, the control game oh think. okay yeah 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 really control oh, red, it's uh, 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 yeah yeah i know because I, i've been talking about this uh because they are using the rtx uh yeah it was, uh, uh north light and uh, no 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 and, no uh, it's the, the developer it's uh oh yeah. sorry i'm, I'm uh, i feel yeah, terrible yeah, yeah. now for um no um, don't don't worry uh Re remedy no yeah, remedy Re games, yeah. Redeem they have yeah. done uh max pain or something like yeah, this exactly. before so, yeah well, yeah well, and they don't use for what he told me they're using them gear for certain things and they needed to to match some namings on the joints and things like that so it did a change that he needed for his company but it, sh it made the pull request and it's something and that it, is great it, so yeah yeah so yeah. what and and now that i need to do something in games also it's great for me because I didn't have to do this development. And a lot of people yeah, yeah. is using it and it's like finding like bugs or things like that only for people using your, your stuff and, and send you feedback that has a huge value. Like you yeah, cannot pay because that with money. Or you if you were to do, to, to, to do a QA uh, yeah. by yourself, it will cost a lot. And, and I'm absolutely, I mean, 99% of the people are super kind and when they are cri yeah. criticizing whatever I'm doing, it's like super positive, whether it's my French accent or the content oh, yeah. I'm doing. You know? I had yeah, yeah, one but, like, Spanish accent uh, was like a, a little rude with one time. Yeah, yeah. And I say, it, it I, I just apologize, like, sorry. <laughs> I try my best, yeah, and they say, it, "Oh no, don't worry. Sorry, I was a good one. Okay. This, this is Normally, one of the things that push me to uh, make caption for every every of my videos. You know, uh, I I don't use YouTube automatic caption because they are like garbage when you have a, a strong accent like me. <laughs> uh, I use I red. You. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and in the end, it. I have something I never thought about is that I had good feedback from deaf people, deaf, deaf people that can't hear. Uh, yeah. They told me, thank you. And I was like, why? But for the subtitles. And I was, oh, yeah, that's because uh, at some point, yeah. some of them reached me and asked if there was caption. And I felt like, like, so sorry, you know, because it costs, it's pretty pricey to make good captions. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you feel like yeah that's like 
kind of not cool for them not to be able to yeah. get access to to all these free or cheap um, uh, educational content mm -hmm. because I've learned Blender like 100% online or with books but mm -hmm. my uh, 3D educational path maybe uh, has cost me less than $1,000 through those five years so that's nothing you know now I'm I'm buying uh, stuff that are a little more pricey because they are more and more specialized mm -hmm. let's say but uh, le learning 3D is not that expensive if you you go in the yeah. in the right places let's say so yeah when you share on youtube well, or when, wherever you want i i think there is the what, what you say is that the, you you had feedback for free or yeah. help for free and this yeah. will uh yeah. make you better yeah absolutely and uh, and there, there is the reward also I, I think this is some kind of uh, artist uh, side of things that you when people are happy and they just say thank you, you just feel better, even yeah. if you haven't made yeah. any money with it. It's, uh... No, absolutely. The people, yeah, I have sometimes a, some people like ask you, you should share, so or you, you're not going to offer services. Or why? Oh, I heard, like, what is your business model for this? And it's no business model. Mm. But yeah. first, yeah, all the value on the community on open source, it's huge. Like, people yeah. who is directly making pull requests and the code that you don't need to do i i make friends a lot of friends through this yeah yeah me too and, yeah and um yeah all the feedback from the users is amazing and for me one of the biggest rewards it's when someone send you a super nice project using your your stuff yeah yeah, yeah. and that it's amazing i, I sometimes yeah. i i I'm, I'm big fan of some studios and they start using M Gear, and I had the chance to even in some in. For instance, uh, I, I'm super big fan of Studio AK in in England. Do you know Studio AK? AK, no. It's, it's Studio AK, like I this? think. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah AK. AKA, with AK, one oh. AKA, Studio AK. Yeah, and BAFTA winner, Oscar nominated. I'm. I'm and I swear okay. I've been sending like maybe 10, 15 years ago, I was sending my reels every year, never received <laughs> like uh, any. Yeah, yeah. And through making them gear, they start using oh, it. Uh, Adam started using it and they contact me. And I did, if you go down, up, up, this auto. For instance, I participated oh, so in, in this project, auto. Auto. Yeah, it's in the, it's just behind the lot. Yeah, this one in the left. Time after the, time, in the left side. Uh, Up, yeah, oh, that one. No, this no, one? No, the one. The, the, oh, sorry. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, that one. Okay. And this one. The, yeah, and I mean, I, I the director is one of my favorite directors oh. from from Studio AK. I okay. really like. Uh, I mean, I one of the first films I really love it. From I don't know if I pronounce his name correctly, but it's Mark Kraste. It's um, Jojo in the Stars, and I love it, that film. And for me, it was super rewarding to through this yeah, because, to, to... because they I think Adam that is the rigger there he had a parental leave or something like that, so they needed a little help for this project. And yeah. they asked me, Do "You want to?" And of course, I say yes. Yeah, <laughs> sure, <for> sure. <laughs> And it was one yeah. fantastic because I, I had the chance also to only not to do rigging, but the, the well, you know, advertisement, the director, uh, I, we, we was talking d directly and he, we had a quick changes on the model. So I said, ah, we need to do changes on the model on this and these very simple things, not big ones. So I don't know, I, I can adjust this. And, <laughs> and it was very, uh, very cool the project i, I yeah, really yeah. like the, the the direction the art direction and the if you have the chance to watch it it's um it's really cool the the direction the the, 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 the thing and 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 you, you're you're talking about opportunities and i think i've never had that much opportunity since i've started to share everything i'm doing you know but, um no. I, I, with people i 
because I think if you if you uh, the, the people that goes like purely professional and close themselves and, and never share what they are doing, there are very little chance that oh, yeah. people see what they are doing f- for first and and uh, and and it feels like it's easier when when someone gets uh, exposed a lot to just ask him, you know. You you just put a comment on YouTube or things like this, and uh, and you see what what happens. And since I've been sharing my work, uh, you 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 told just before that you've made a lot of friends uh, online by sharing M gear, but um, sharing my tutorials uh, and being on CG Cookie or on, on forums at some point and and helping people with their project. I I did. Uh, met a lot of people and and one good friend i have now he helped me i mean he he developed some script for me because i don't know how to script at all and that's uh, the next step in my learning path you know uh uh and and i mean this guy we we just met on on forum because i I, uh, helped me at i helped him on, at some point on, on project and he, he gave me feedback on, on my project too and now we are like chatting every day we've met at the blender conference two mm-hmm. years ago and get drunk together <laughs> that was fantastic you know and now we're like they're doing stuff and and since uh, the the rigging thing i've seen a lot of uh, people sharing what they have done with it Mm-hmm. And sometimes you see like artists that I that I will place like super high in my, mm-hmm. you know, like they are super high level and and they do amazing stuff and they just credit you saying, "Hey, this course is awesome. I've been able to do this because of this yeah. course." And it, that's, I, I mean, money is money. That's great to have money, but this kind of thing, I won't say it's yeah, it's almost yeah. priceless. It yeah. makes you happy for the rest of the week, and you know yeah. you're, you're just motivated to to go on. So yeah, I totally um, agree. And and for me, is yeah, I don't work in. I, I think, well, I'm lucky because I work what I in things that I love, like animation, and yeah. movies, and yeah. games, and things like that. Uh, and yeah, I think not nobody is in this industry for the money. If you want money, like money. You do other things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You you will fail. And uh, but I think so. Th- this is something I've pointed in in my video about about my path. Um, there is uh, a part of luck in our life. Okay, the where you are born, uh, in, in which family, etc. Et for sure. But uh, the, the biggest chance I had in my life was to be able to choose what I wanted to do, you know, yeah. to have a family supportive enough to, uh, uh, to, to pay uh, educational stuff or just to, to, to provide whatever you need to uh, do what you want. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was like working like super hardcore. It's not like I, I was super lazy and waiting for mm-hmm. things to to fall from the sky but i think this is the biggest chance i had in my life but if you have this chance then you just have to to take it Mm -hmm. and if you have the chance to do what you want then you you're not doing it for the money and and you're just doing it because you love it and then money will come because you will uh, andrew pricey the blender guru he did a couple of yeah he did a couple of interviews and uh, he interviewed mostly like super high level lead artists like uh, uh, Michael Vincent, uh, Orb, he's like lead um, environment artist at Blizzard. Mm-hmm. Um, and and whatever people he was interviewing, they all, you, you everyone was saying that they were drawing, making 3D like all day long and even at night and for their whole life so uh, there were never a time where they were saying ah i wanted to make money so i put a lot of effort in learning 3d it's just like they were passionate and super committed and Mm -hmm. if you you are 
able uh, to build a career on something you are passionate with. I won't say that you will never have hard time, but it helps a lot. You know, it helps a lot to to get better, to share. Mm -hmm. uh, because there, there is a, I'm super excited when I share what I'm doing. And uh, I have a, a big um, imposter syndrome. I think we oh. all have it at yeah. some point. Yeah, uh, that's... It's it's uh, yeah it's chronic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, and lately for me that's like super terrible. I mean, you, when you've contacted me, I I've hesitated uh, yeah. to, to uh, refuse uh, because I, I didn't understand what you wanted from me. I mean, when when I see the people you no. you interview, like they are hardcore riggers and and like oh, I was like, no, but <laughs> you you I mean for for me. Yeah, yeah, I remember you replied me like, I don't know if I, it's, you, you told me, like, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah, well, well. Super interesting what you're doing because, uh, in, and maybe we can jump also to just taking this uh, tangent to, to, to your project because I want to check on Nora and these things, but because you're yeah. doing everything and not everybody doing that. And I'm big proponent that, I mean, for, I mean, rigging can be many things. You're talking about yeah. specifics. And there are riggers that are mainly developers and riggers that are more like artistic. Like yeah. there are riggers that they, they can apply certain things or they work in a system that it's very specific for, for where they work. So it's very wide. But for me, rigger uh, or what I like to be or how I like to be a rigger, it's more like a... I was commenting the other day, like a, like a Renaissance man. Like you do art, yeah. you do technical, yeah, you yeah, study yeah, yeah, everything. You keep rolling and studying and uh, in you know cycling all this, and and yeah. that is where it's the fun for me, because and sometimes I like a lot of, for instance, for me, I do a lot of coding right now, and I like it because at the beginning it was like a pain in the, like I self thought yeah, also. Yeah, like, I guess. Yeah. And but when you, you you learn a little and you start like getting results and it's something like very like you get in the zone that I would call like focus and and it's very like the time flies and and it's something that um for instance didn't happen to me in animation. It have it yeah it's it's different. But I absolutely get what you're saying and but, this is. What Sorry. I I, yeah. I was saying when I told you I wasn't super creative, I th this is the kind of job where we solve problem. So I guess that coding once you get the level where you can write whatever you want and you're just thinking of the tool or the solution you want to bring and exactly. you know how to write it, but you're more focusing on the mechanism and stuff like that. Yeah, and animation and have a lot of that also. But I think I never try like enough to get to the to the level. You know, that's the other. Mm -hmm. one. Okay. That uh, I yeah, think. Well, I don't... Well. Sorry. I... No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, but in your case, I think you maybe you told me now that you want. I, I was thinking you know uh, scripting, but you want to learn, so probably you you going on the, yeah. on, the on the path, but you already modeling. And doing well, like look dev and all these things, and and animation, it's it's great on on your style, and and you're doing this this game, this uh, Nora. That it's yeah, yeah. I mean, are you doing everything by yourself? I, because I'm sorry, I'm just maybe I didn't research enough for the uh, interview here. So but... yeah, uh, we, we we'll jump a bit. Yeah. I, I will go on the art station because it's more up to date uh, on my art station here. Up, oh, sorry. Um, so it's um, uh, um, uh, so I I was recruited on Noara in uh, twenty sixteen mm -hmm. in December twenty sixteen. So I've started working in February twenty seventeen. So it's been like three years, almost full time. And at the very beginning of the project. I was working on uh, already modeled character and uh, they asked me to rig and animate. Mm -hmm. I was recruited for this, so I will just 
show you the old characters. The, the fir- oh, I will show you my very first animation for Noara. So I feel like a lot of people will also feel like we all start somewhere and doing animation. <laughs> but you, um, you started to do animation in this project straight? No, 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 oh, so no. You no, did no. something before. No, but I, I was doing animation like maybe, um, I don't know, three weeks per year or something like this. Oh, wow. Like on some on some on I'm some projects. Um, uh, the the um, one of the first animation. Ah, yeah. So I, I did quite a bit of animation for this one and. Um, I will show you this one. Okay. So this one, those were, so it was uh, 2014. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this, this was a time where uh, I was doing uh, animation uh, on, on my own characters and developing my own stuff. So, but the, the, the animation level was like uh, not, not good at, at all, but those were my first, uh, more or less my first 3D animation. So, uh, so, so I did animate a bit, but I've never opened the graph editor, never, never see what a curve was, never understood how curves were working. You know, a lot of, of stuff that beginners uh, are struggling with, I would say. But, uh, and I was, yeah, more interested into, you know, reading and, and stuff like this uh, already at the, at this point, uh, so the, the rig is a bit crappy, but at this time I was super proud of it. You know? So if uh, I will show you a couple, yeah, those animations you can see that they are like very, very. I don't know if the 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 feedback is good. They are very rough and very blocky, you know, because it was mostly pose to pose animation, you know, without uh, curve editing. So Great. I was doing a, a lot of different things and uh, they asked, since, since I was rigging and I was doing a, a bit of commission work uh, about rigging and fighting, it's super hard to find riggers mm. uh, because you don't know where to find them, first of all, because you don't see art station page, uh, look at my bone chain, you know, it's not sexy at all. <laughs> <laughs> You know? Yeah, that's uh, we need to change that. I'm gonna post uh, <laughs> bone chains, <laughs> sexy bone it's, chains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, especially when the people that are r- recruiting you mm-hmm. absolutely don't know anything about rigging or animation. Mm-hmm. You know, wh- where do you find an animator? You you see tons of character artists and environment artists on ArtStation mm-hmm. in the top row, but you never see like riggers or technical artists there. You yeah. know, and if you so, there are so they, they have, they, it's yeah. the um, technical uh, director at our, our site, the developer of the game that found me and he told the boss, yeah, you, you should ask this guy to give it a try. So um, I, I've started like rigging those, but now the, I, I, I hate this rig is so badly made you know it's a pain to animate but uh, at this time it was working and i will just show you the, the run cycle because it, it's quite funny i think yeah but it's it's not i mean it's not like there are worse run cycles uh, but <laughs> it wasn't good you see that the frame is popping and there the, the pose is like like super weird. So uh, the, the model were already made by um, a young artist. Uh, it was fully uh, poly model. So the, the, the topology and stuff wasn't like perfect. But uh, I must say that at this time, I wasn't like super, um, uh, I don't know how to say, but um aware about what is a good topology and stuff like this you know you just rig and you see deforms like more or less well and you say okay let's let's uh, try try to find a solution so um uh, the thing is that since i was doing all the ring and the animation mm-hmm. 
I progressed a lot because this is something I'd like to point out is uh, the lack of animators that uh, the, the animators that lack of rigging skills. And I'm not saying that they need to be able to build the full rig, but at least to understand uh, the, the principles, a few constraints so that they can tell the, the rigger, I, I think this joint is not uh, placed properly or it's not behaving properly. Uh, because mm. the, the thing you will hear is that, yeah, it's, uh, it's deforming or moving like weirdly. And you have to deal with this as a feedback. Okay? Yeah. So sometimes it's like, oh, I'd like a Nike chain on, on this part of the body or something yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah, but and one thing, sorry to interrupt you, but this is one of the things I wanted to say before that it's, it's that this, the inverse also apply for the rig, I think. Yeah, that, that, I was going to say that. <laughs> uh, there is when the, in the rear is in the middle of animation, modeling. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to have three three legs and one in the middle and, yeah. the in and both and uh, yeah so Sorry. yeah yeah the, uh, and what, what i wanted to say is that the, the fact that i get to uh, animate with my rigs i was like oh this is like not good at all the way i uh, oriented this bone is like super mm -hmm. painful to read the curves or it doesn't behave properly so then you improve your rig um and then uh, there is the, the moment. So all, all the models were done by someone else, okay? And uh, they were already delivered. I had to rig and animate. So I've been doing this for one year. But at the same time, uh, it's a very small company. It's a project from people that I have left everything to dive into it, okay? They were not in the game industry at all mm -hmm. at the beginning. So I had the chance to be able to... Uh, give some advices because since I was more or less into production pipeline and managing project and, and you always have something to say about the way you will manage the project, the way you will manage the, uh, the pipeline between the animation, the integration in Unity and stuff like this, you know. Um, uh, so so, so I, I was... They, they were more and more listening to, to, to what I, I was saying. And I was more and more uh, learning about a bit of everything mm -hmm. about how to, to create this kind of thing. So beyond rigging and animation, uh, I was starting to get more aware about uh, what a good topology is. And it's not because you've seen a YouTube video about topology. It's become you are experiencing an elbow that is not bending properly. And this is where you get really aware of what a good topology is and, and how you can find different ways. So, uh, so yeah, that, that's the thing. And uh, the, so, 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 yeah, I've been doing this for uh, maybe a year. And, and so uh, whenever you jump from my first character to the second, the third, etc., the, the rigging has evolved a lot, you know. Like in uh, three or four months, it was evolving on each characters. And I started sharing this on Twitter and stuff like this. And people were telling me, well, the, the rig looks great, etc." And I was like, well, it's like super basical, you know. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I was working on this, this little guy here. Mm -hmm. And the thing that most people don't know is that I was planning to release the rigging course like two years ago on this guy. Mm -hmm. So uh, I will show you the, the rig I've done. And the thing is that um, I, I've made a, a rig that was way too complex even for me. You know, I was in a, in a, a stage of my rigging learning path where you want to to add more and more features, you know, mm -hmm. you want to be able to do everything and you want to, you know, like to have like super advanced muscle deformation and uh, switchable FK, mm -hmm. IK and whatever you want, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you want to do. And so uh, it, it ended up being like a nightmare and I've recorded like 120 hours of content for this course uh, and the rig was buggy. So you couldn't then... Oh. 
pretend to teach people how to rig because the, the rig was too complex. Yeah. So um, I, I've always been like working on the game, still working for some other customers because I don't make a lot of money with the game. Okay, it's uh, more the the passion project than the project that uh, oh. make me peel the the bills, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I had uh, customers in the um, uh, in the medical industry and stuff like this. So you you make medical videos and mm. uh, it pays pretty well. Okay, so uh, I think like one half of check. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that's yeah because the the and, and still nowadays I'm kind of uh, I. I mean, so now I, I'm the CG director of Noara, so it's a big name. But what, what I want to point out is that most of the the people I'm managing, uh, all the people I'm managing, earn more money than me on the game. You know, because they are like employed, and we need to pay them like they would be paid in a yeah, studio. Like, you know, but I'm not doing. Yeah, so uh, fortunately, the educational content on the side allow me to to uh, live a good life, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and to, because I wouldn't, I'm not, uh, I'm a reasonable guy, you know, I, I wouldn't get involved into a project that will uh, put my life and uh, sec financial security on the edge. Uh, that's part of my education, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, but, uh, it's, I mean, I understand in my case. I mean, I have family and I have yeah. responsibilities, so I would and like also to jump and do only like short films and art, anim like artistical, experimental animation and things like that. But uh, yeah, that you need to. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's risky. And, so so yeah. whether you 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 win a million dollars like uh, with with uh, card games or I don't know something like that, you know, <laughs> or you you inherit like uh, from a, an old aunt some somewhere, no. or you just have something that provide enough and you you find some time to work on your personal yeah. project. So that yeah. that was a bit the philosophy at the beginning and uh, and. Uh, and, and, and nowadays it's kind of the same, but I, I'm peaceful, uh, let's say, money-wise, so that, that's fine. Yeah. And I, I really enjoy the the project, and I've put money into the project now. You know, we, at, at the beginning, I, I wasn't believing in it, but I was doing cool things, rigging character, rigging warriors and animating mm -hmm. them. I mean, yeah. you, you so just you... dream about this, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Especially when you are doing medical videos, you know? <laughs> Uh, they come, hey, do you want to animate cool warriors? Yeah, sure. And you pay me for that? Okay, I will do it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, at the beginning, I, I was uh, focusing on this. And then since I was getting a bit more involved on the management side of things, because of my um, uh, generalist experience, Mm -hmm. I know a bit of modeling. I know a bit of uh, real-time modeling and stuff like this. So when we had someone coming in and saying, so it will take me uh, like a month to do this piece and it's going to be $5,000 to do it, I was like, no, no, no. This is a one-week job maximum. I, I can do it in 10 days. So as a specialist, you can do it in, in, in seven days. And it helped us like getting rid of some That's great. Uh, of the and bad. And what's it about the the game? And it's in general because I I know the game because I, of you, but I I really don't know what is like. It's, it's like, oh, okay. Like the game it's itself. A, it's a, it's a turn based MOBA, you know. Uh -huh. uh, so it's a technical tactical sorry MOBA, a turn based oh. one. But it's a, a bit hybrid, but uh, I can't really tell about the, the hybrid things, sides of things, you know, for the time being. Oh, okay. It's so kind of, of a, like a... Like yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's being uh, alpha tested. We, we, are, we, we will, to, to be honest, we will be uh, uh, not releasing it, but sending it to, uh, in, not investors, but uh, editors, like in a couple of months mm. from now. So it has been alpha tested by uh, professional um, uh, gamers for more than a year. And now we are 
the, the game design, I mean, the game design has evolved so much in, in mm. three years, you can't imagine. Or maybe you can imagine working in a, in a game company. Yeah. And uh, now we have something that is uh, like a lot of people are pleased with and uh, a lot of editors are, are telling us that we got something interesting. So we should be able to make a more official release or maybe a, a, a beta access like this year. This is the, the, the objective. Cool. Uh, so it's, it's going to be on like a cell phone? Like... No, no, no. It, it's a PC game. Oh, it's a PC game. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Yeah, why, yeah it's, uh, a, it's a I was it's thinking it's a... So the the uh the yeah yeah so the, the, there was the, the thing about dreaming about this but at some point we had um, uh we were using unity uh oh, I will have some art okay we were using U unity um environment stuff you know mm -hmm. to to uh, create the maps and we have uh hired an environment artist Mm -hmm. But after a month, he quit without telling us that he was uh, he was quitting. So it was a bit rough, uh, and we didn't have any options. So I was like, I, I can do the environment. So I, I got into um, since most of the the previous m uh, characters were all animated, and the gameplay was more or less set. Uh, we need we need to to create the environment, so this is where I've started to make all the environments, and uh, so this took took me quite a while, like uh, six to eight months, I think, mm -hmm. almost full time doing uh, like uh, sculpting trees and and creating yeah, uh, textures and, and stuff how, like that. So, how is uh, Blender for for games in general, like the pipeline? Uh, it's it's. Uh, like do you had like uh like issues or or it's yeah uh, the, because... the, for, for me blender is you, you can do uh everything but the texturing texturing it's uh yeah the texturing in blender uh since it's uh um uh, you you you've never used blender maybe no no i i touch it i mean i know how to let's say navigate and but no i never use it in like really seriously no. in, in the raw version and even in, in more advanced with add-ons and stuff you don't have any layer system for painting you, I know? See. you have to create nodes create a you, texture you plug the like... texture into the node uh, and yeah. then you can paint on this layer and you have to save the texture each time mm. you make a modification etc so it's not uh, we, we, but but for sculpting uh, retopology rigging animation baking etc uh we use we, you, we could use blender we use uh zbrush because at some point i would zbrush and i've learned zbrush but i've learned to sculpt in blender and uh if i were like to uh to 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 switch totally to blender that would be perfectly fine mm -hmm. uh you know to, to sculpt uh, what we are uh, mm -hmm. to do what we are doing so uh, but yeah, for texturing, if you tell me you need, you must use Blender, I won't be like super happy. Mm. We use like Substance Painter. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, the, yeah, it's all the, the time. It's uh, I, I I yeah normally yeah on my spare time I try also to do like as I was saying like try to be a more like a Renaissance and <laughs> try to do other things that I don't yeah. do at the office. Uh, just very simple, but yeah. I, I I get like indie license for uh, Substance Painter, yeah, yeah. and in my life, in my whole life, I was able to create like a decent texture for anything. And I watching a few tutorials on Substance and yeah. downloading some presets, and uh, I get this plugin called Cholot or Cholot Studio from Cholot, yeah, Cholot maybe, Studio. Yeah. It's, a, it's one that connects i think it also works from for blender and I, I use maya with redshift and you say i want redshift uh, blender or what or maya whatever and exports all the materials and connect it has the the contrapart and okay it, you it mean plugs he... everything for you for oh, okay yeah 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 that's 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 cool it's uh, called 
Ch Cholo I, 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 sorry, I, I can send you later, or I will add it on the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing is, uh, is that at the, our side, uh, I've built like uh, um, a, a little shader um, that mimics um, Unity Specular shader. Mm -hmm. So the, when, when we are communicating between uh, Substance Painter and Blender. Mm -hmm. uh, you you just plug the the few maps you have, and mm -hmm. then it uh, just whenever you re-export the textures, it will automatically mm -hmm. uh, yeah. refresh. Really, or yeah, that's something similar, but even connects all the shading networks for you, especially if you do like offline render, like Redshift or Arnold, or I think for cycles also will work. Like okay, yeah, I need give to... you all like it's one click. So now it looks like I, I I know how to do textures. I don't have a clue. Yeah. It's like it's so easy now. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was like yeah, going to open this. Oh one. yeah, the the muscle thing. It's uh, yeah, just but I mean I will just the topology. It's like clip it or it's is that the topology? I know. Uh, or it's so it looks like some edges doesn't finish the connection yeah yeah because they are, they are just not displayed but okay. uh okay. if i uh show oh, everything I it's uh it's decent it's not the best topology ever because he, mm. <laughs> well, it looks good uh, I, but uh yeah yeah and you see that, that tons of corrective shape keys and stuff like this so it was like uh mm. quite of a, a nightmare yeah. to, to 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 build this rig and uh, this is what uh, I told you before, is that I met tons of problems and stuff like this. So the, mm. the thing is that yeah, for Noir, I've been doing like uh, rigging and, and character animation. Then I started to make some, um, uh, some environments. And at some point, it was on uh, uh, the end of 2018, in December, Mm -hmm. I've made this little character so because um, we wanted to refresh a bit the the, the old character, mm -hmm. and I started with this one, which is a, a, a PNG, a non-playable character, you know, mm -hmm. in the, just for fun, and um, it kind of sets the standard of quality we were looking for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I've I've done this one too, so the the, the full pipeline, and um, I've been when I've done this character. This is where I uh, I got really more confident in my rigging skill, and especially in my rigging needs. Mm. You know, the fact that uh, don't put um, I don't know a mechanism or a feature if you don't need it. Okay, that's for the animator. That that's just super yeah. painful. Yeah, I, and uh, yeah, I had like uh, I don't know how to say, it, but uh, a, a moment where you you feel like okay, I feel I get the philosophy about trigging is that um, there there were that the fact that I knew how to build almost every mechanism in Blender. Mm -hmm. Not saying that I, I would be able to understand how to place every joint, you know, to do every like super complex things. But if you uh, ask me to uh, like make this bone behave this way or follow this one, but not this one or switch from mm -hmm. this one to this one. Now I, I'm able to do it. Yeah, you know, feel so, comfortable doing like yeah, things yeah. that you never did before. Like you can find solutions. Yeah, uh, it's problems. like coding yeah. when you were talking about coding. I'm not into the thing that what this constraint is doing, okay, mm -hmm. but more like what I want to do or how I want the rig to behave mm -hmm. and yeah. then trying to find solutions. So, and that's way more exciting than fighting with constraint with mm -hmm. rigging, hierarchy, and stuff like yeah. this. And, uh, yeah. and this is what, what I wanted to teach people in the in the, my, my yeah. course is that uh, I, I focus mainly when, when I, I've called it the art of effective rigging is that um, I, I just wanted to show them that if you uh, understand the very basics on mm -hmm. all bone behaves and don't be like afraid by a thousand bone on a character, mm -hmm. uh, but just behave on like an arm or something like this, um, you can learn rigging and, and 
its complex rigs are just an accumulation of very simple things, one yes. of, uh, on top of each other. Yeah. And I think it's the same in coding. You need to have a good hierarchy of the code and understand what you, is your goal. And, and you just put layers and layers of functionality yeah. until you you reach what yeah. you need. So, and totally yeah. agree with that. Absolutely. Mm. That's, um, yeah. And, uh, I, I should check your, your class one day when I... Yeah. <laughs> I need to just find the time. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah but I, I feel like you you could yeah, just uh, watch it on the fly and, and you will get all Blender's rigging tools. No, works. I'm, I'm not that smart. Uh, Trust me. I <laughs> just uh, need to go yeah. stop. Okay, where is it? Then uh, he so, has such a, a yeah, strong accent. <laughs> but definitely, yeah. I will check one day. I just it's too much of me. And and for me the, I, I mean. For me, I, I like Blender is nice and, and I think it's growing super fast and there's a lot of cool stuff. It's just like, it's, yeah, I really don't need it now. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I work, it's, we work with yeah. mainly Maya and Motion Builder and sometimes Max. That's, uh, that's what we need and, Sadly, there is not that much like volume of uh, like demand for for riggers or for projects in Blender. I think it's gonna change in the in the next years. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. for sure, it's it's something that it will it will change little by little. But still, like there is something that uh, yeah. If I had more time in in my hands, for sure, I will dive just for fun. But for the moment, it's. It's just something I want. I, I feel the hype hitting me. Yeah, Blender, uh, Blender, yeah. Blender. And I, yeah, it's cool. I really, but, ah, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, but if you need to start, like, if, or, like, so uh, I, feel, I now felt it, uh, it with, with Maya too. Yeah, yeah like, it's what, what, what... different. Yeah, yeah that, but, but you know what, when I, because in the beginning, I, I feel like, animation and rigging has become my thing mm -hmm. if i had to specialize or, or be better or something it will be uh, this pipeline mm -hmm. and um uh, i i think you know richard lico rick lico yeah 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 he know, he has uh published uh so so i had the the the, the chance to work from a guy from amplify studio the, the, they do amplify shader and uh, for uh, Unity. Uh, so is Yuri Montero, but no, no problem. And, and he told me he, he, he told me about Richard Lico and about mm. uh, he, he was using space switching when animating our characters because at some point uh, we 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 rig so we have a a couple not more than a, I have a, a few people that. That, that works with us now. We have a junior character artist that is modeling and doing all the character. And I have a, an animator that helped me now. So that, that's cool. And um, so he told me about Richard Lico and about space switching. So I, I got to the GDC stuff and, and see, saw yeah. his work. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. That's talk, yeah. And uh, I saw it was like Maya, and I was like, maybe I should start learning Maya because for riggers and animation, yeah. I know it's way more powerful. But um, uh, I just took his class, and I was like, but I, I can do everything he's doing in Blender, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, many things and are. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can do a lot of oh yeah yeah you can <laughs> you absolutely like, can um, so i i reach reach on uh, i dm him on twitter and telling him so i'm a blender user i think i can do everything you're doing in blender i wish i could uh, rig your character the character you're sharing in your course in blender so that you can share the blender rig of the character uh, mm. along along your course yeah. and he accepted so this is what, uh, uh, when we talked about sharing your knowledge or, or sharing stuff for free, I had the chance to spend like two hours on Skype with this guy, like he's the, yeah. you know, like a, a legend in the game animation. Yeah. I was yeah. like a kid and 
that's that's amazing yeah that's amazing. i have the other thing i don't know who told me like i should bring him to the podcast and and definitely i i will try to, to oh yeah, to contact yeah, him yeah absolutely and, and talk about it because it's really it's really interesting how how he does anime i saw the yeah he's also he has this uh animation sherpa i think is this cool yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it's the course uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I I'm re- recently so I'm following tons of of uh, rigors now, and and Kill Figgins uh, talked about him oh, yeah. too, like about the way that faster. he yeah. he build he, he doesn't build rigs on the fly, but he I don't know he he modified the rig on the fly using locators and and short scripts. Yeah. And um, well, when I told you about my friend that script for me, we've been working on a space switching add-on for Blender that mm-hmm. allow you to do space switching the way Richard Lico does it. So, oh. uh, and this is go- starting to become pretty solid and I'm using like it like every day. And uh, it really, really changed the way I animate. Not that um, I'm... I haven't really modified my rig. I uh, bring some improvement to it. Mm-hmm. But when you need to uh, uh, polish, uh, for example, a weapon of a character hitting the ground and you have to switch uh, pivot and stuff like this, yeah. and you don't need to counter animate anymore, you know, you just make the animation, switch pivot, do stuff. Uh, uh, and I've learned all this kind of thing. And yeah. when I, I think, and I, I say it every time I, I talk about Richard Lico that his like tutorial was blowing my mind, but that's so true. I, it has opened so many yeah. possibilities. There's, uh, yeah, there's a. I think uh, yeah. I would. I, I saw the 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 talk he did in uh, GDC, and it's really interesting. And also, it's very um. I think very I aim for games. I think can be applied also for offline, like traditional, all their kind of animations. But yeah, and also if you're interested in like new ways or new ways of thinking and animation, you should check the um, uh, Raf and Zobin, the, uh, oh. the ephemeral rig system, R- Raphael and Zobin. Uh, I don't know him. You, you, it's you in, just send me the, the link yeah, at some point. If you check the on the on this podcast on the list, is one episode with him. He's talking about the ephemeral ring, but I will send you the the link. Because I, I heard this name, I, I think uh, uh, quite quite a few time when. Uh, I mean, he's a legend in in in, I, 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 in I, animation. Yeah. It's a legend. He did. Back in the day, was the Anzobin rigging system? I think it's they still sell it, and it was the like the way to go. Ah, this is with Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy, it's the uh, it's a real papa of uh, M Gear. So you, so Rafael something? something. It's Rafael. It's it's uh, I don't know more no. More you down than the... Perry yeah, Perry. Yeah, yeah. you need if you didn't watch. Ah, uh, yeah, there is it. The Raph and Zobin, this one, yeah, number ten. Okay, yeah. Okay. Check that one. Okay, I will, I will, I, I will watch it. Yeah, for sure. This, I mean, I'm, I'm super fan of this technique, and, and I think, again, it depends what you, you aim for. I don't know if for games this will. I don't know. Maybe we need to check with Raphael on this, but, but, but you, you know, it, it just open your mind to something else. Yeah. You know, I, I'm in gaming today. Hopefully, I will be in gaming for a while because I really enjoy it. Mm. Uh, but the thing is that whenever I, whenever I'm doing something like animation, if it relies on the rig, I want to know how to rig. You know, and now I feel like rigging rely a lot on scripting. If you want to create an automated rigging system or you know some i spent hours like assigning constraint to each bone in my rig because i was not able uh, to no, take, not good. take all the bone at the constraint you no, know no, no, just it's... one by one like yeah, and you forget uh, one you... yeah I, I i i'm at this point you know yeah, yeah. i'm at a point where my, my friend he saw me on videos like assigning a constraint to each bone and he just write the script as yeah. we were talking and he yeah. sent it to me use this it's automated and i was like yeah, okay you need to, need... to keep the creative part and and 
get rid of the repetitive yeah, of all the pain you know yeah, I, I don't want to be coding i just want to to script a bit to make things faster it's coding uh, you you, you, uh, you don't get one without the other <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 anyway so uh yeah it's great um i'm sorry i i think maybe we should uh wrap here because uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't sure. check the time but i we probably passed two hours and yeah yeah, it's yeah 1 yeah, a.m here so <laughs> just oh okay yeah yeah you, you got to i, get I hate to, to stop the conversation because i, I no, think we no, can no go come uh, i mean keep talking on this for a long time and maybe we we, we should again repeat maybe next yeah, season well, or something with pleasure uh, yeah and maybe if i learn some blender also and and maybe you learn some maya maybe i think yeah, yeah. It's good to, especially this last thing, like, sorry, just try to grab, but no, keep no, no, no. going in tangents. But yeah, if you learn several DCCs, like different software, there is different ways to do different things. Um, it's same thing in different softwares. And when you, you get knowledge from one to another, you can maybe combine and create more new stuff, you know? Yeah. Like if you, if, like if you play two instruments and you want to make a song, it's you can get rhythm from one to another things like that so it's gonna yeah 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 i think it's gonna it's yeah gonna... i totally get it and and uh the now now that i i feel like i i feel comfortable with reading in general watching like um i i watch re uh, maya reading tutorials now you know i've never used maya ever but i i feel like i understand more or less what's happening on the mm. screen yeah. And so I'm like, okay, yeah. I could reproduce this mechanism yeah. because you find more advanced Maya tutorial on the internet for yeah. sure. So yeah, I, I totally get it. Uh, I mean, if you want to learn digital sculpting, you can do it in Blender and follow ZBrush class. You yeah, know? exactly. And, and uh, uh, I yeah. see the some software like um, Cascader or like Motion Blender. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm not That's really cool. aware of what they are doing, but I know that they are doing stuff that are, that I, I will, I should have a look to, you know, yeah. so. They have a really nice stuff. Yeah. And one thing I want to, and there is another, I think it was two podcasts or three before this one uh, with Helge, with my friend Helge, it's working on the control rig for Unreal Engine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep an awesome. eye on that. Check it out. The, yeah, the, sure, also sure, the episode. Sure. This one, it's, it's pure gold. Like, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I'm sure it is. And I was thinking, like, if I I really want to learn, like, Blender, and, but probably the first on my list is Unreal Control Rig. Yeah, yeah. Because it's... Me too. We're, we're working on Unity, and uh, the, the more we, we get forward, the more I'm like, oh, I wish we, we were using Unreal Engine. <laughs> and also, I don't know if you've seen, but... Uh, they have become one of the main sponsors of Blender. Yeah. And they have like two guys in their core teams that are developing uh, pipeline tune, uh, uh, bridge tools between Blender and uh, Unreal Engine. I, I saw so some well, of the podcasts they do. This. Yeah. I didn't saw so, it, I watch uh, all the episodes, but yeah. Uh, and having a, a control ring directly inside the... The, yeah. the the game engine that's awesome i mean we, we don't really need it in our game but if i was able to tweak the animation directly in unity or, or tweak the behavior of the character that will be like like fantastic yeah. or be able you know to set like tracking uh, ik or stuff like that directly in unity on the deformation you know and make the raw animation in blender and then yeah. make some secondary mechanism in unity that, yeah. that will be so cool yeah, uh, yeah. definitely yeah. Uh, i'm so so looking forward yeah, to i think this. the future is really interesting in rigging area yeah yeah. In many yeah, yeah 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 that that i you know i have goosebumps just saying that you know, <laughs> yeah that's so exciting like... <laughs> so yeah I, i'm serious i'm serious <laughs> just thinking that yeah that will be so cool oh yes so yeah it was so nice thank you so much for yeah, thanks the for having me. Now. Yeah, yeah, and your patient and today because a, we had a little a, issue. A the people probably don't know, but we was planning to record this in another moment today, but I had some in, uh, unexpected things happening, <laughs> so we had yeah. to, to postpone it a little. But I think it was great, and thank you so much. I really appreciate you yeah. coming to, to yeah, share your, your journey a, a with pleasure. us. Thank you. Yeah.
Thank you very much. And I hope maybe we can have another talk one day about Blender stuff. Of course. And, uh, and then we'll engine. When, yeah. <laughs> we will. <laughs> Have a nice, uh, have a good night and uh, I'll nice see day. you later. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>